So it sounds like you know it's Queen Mary's Dark Harbor that we all love. Um, and we have an exclusive announcement for all of you. So please welcome to the stage the 13th floor director of a special projects, Bert Bertolini. Berlino, Berlino. Hi, Zabby. Brett. Brett Bertolino, everybody. Oh, it's Hi, Brett. Welcome back. Yes. Um, so how does it feel, Brett, to be producing such an iconic event that people are so excited about as returning to the Good Mary? Well, I think I can speak for both Amy and myself and say it's super exciting and it's a true honor to work on this project. If you're from Southern California, you know how legendary Dark Harbor is. But it's legendary outside of this market. Both Amy and I are fans of Dark Harbor. When we were producing Halloween events on the East Coast together, we flew across the country on multiple occasions just to see Dark Harbor. And so I feel like our haunt careers are coming full circle when we have this opportunity to bring back such a legendary event that's been dormant for four seasons. I don't think that's something that happens very often. And so it's really a true honor for us to be, you know, participating in this project. And I hear you have some news to share with us today. We do. So who was at the Dark Harbor panel yesterday? <laughs> yesterday we talked about some new mazes. We uh, teased a new maze on the ship called Infirmary. We teased a new maze in the harbor called Breakout. We told you about some new rides. We told you about the secret bar program. We talked about entertainment. And we said that we'd drop another announcement here today. Um, right now. Yeah. I think, are we gonna show the trailer first? Or? I think the trailer's at the end. Got it. Um, what about the next slide? I think it might Hit be. Hit us with the next slide. Do you guys remember this? So, as Amy and I are producing Dark Harbor, we've spent a lot of time doing research, a lot of time talking to other fans. And we know that one of the things that most resonates with people are the stories of Dark Harbor and the icon characters of Dark Harbor. The chef we found was one of the icon characters that was newer, and we found that the chef actually didn't resonate as much as some of the other characters, some of the other icons that we want to bring back. So I want to go to the next slide. One of the interesting things about producing Dark Harbor this year is four years have passed since the event operated. The Queen Mary was closed for three Halloweens. During that time, nearly all the physical assets from the past events were lost to time. When we started producing this event, we were told that all the mazes on the ship no longer existed, that they were removed when the ship was closed. And then we got a call from Dylan, who uh, runs events on the ship, and he said, I found something. Do you have a moment to come over here? And I said, of course we do. And deep, deep inside the ship, in the very back of the ship, is the feast maze. And somehow, over those four years, because it's so deeply buried in the ship, the maze was still there, intact. It was like stepping back in time. It was so emotional for us because we're fans of Dark Harbor. You can even see some of the pictures up here from the last night of 2019, the thank you message to the feast staff in the feast break room. So it was such an eerie, creepy experience, but also so exciting. And then we had the parallel kind of thought, well, okay, feast has an icon character that probably resonated least with the fans. So it was kind of a win, but also a loss. Um, we've been telling our fans that we're gonna honor the history, the legacy, and the stories of Dark Heart. In some of the mazes this year, we're telling completely new stories, continuing. In some of the mazes, we're continuing the existing stories of the past and telling what happens next in those stories. With Feast, we decided to go in a different direction. Amy, you want to tell them where we landed? Yes, we decided to go back in time. So if you could think of Dark Harbor as a film series, we wrote a prequel. <laughs> Meet our young, ambitious, handsome butcher 
with his eyes on the role of head chef on a luxury cruise liner. After chopping up meat for years on the ship, he grew resentful towards the first class passengers, ungrateful for his meticulous cuts of meat, fish, poultry, and beef. He grew frustrated and he started to take things into his own hands. He thought, maybe I need some type of special ingredient. So this butcher waited until it was late at night when people were leaving the dining room, a little tipsy from a little too much champagne. He lurked in the halls of the Queen Mary and jumped out and nabbed first class passengers Needle to the neck, sedating them, and dragged him back to his butcher block. All of a sudden, everyone on the ship started saying, Yum, this food tastes delicious. What is so good? What are these secret recipes? People started going crazy. I need the name of the chef. Oh, it's not the chef, it's a butcher. What is this meat? It's so good. He started growing, you know, his pride. He's saying, oh yes, I'm the best butcher. This is, and the chef was getting jealous and his coworkers were getting jealous. When he thought, I'll take care of my competition. Took them down too. They became part of the feast as well. But soon, all this went to his head and he got hungry and started eating his own spoils. He needs more meat. He's searching for it. He is looking for you. Everyone who comes into this attraction this year could be end up on the table. Of course, as he became more and more distressed, he eventually became who you recognize from the past as the chef. But we want you to step back in time with us to follow the story of the young, ambitious butcher rising the ranks. This year, the prequel story of Feast at Dark Harbor. Thank you.